Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I am Steve Chapman of Fishing Florida Radio. Today I'm in Kissimmee, Florida. Why? Because I've been here too much lately, but FLW is here fishing the Kissimmee chain of lakes. And today is registration day. And I should have access to talk to a bunch of the anglers, see what they say, see what they're thinking of, and uh, do some interviews. So. Here we go. Leesburg, I don't want to say boy, Leesburg guy. Yeah, yeah, Leesburg for sure. How, uh, how excited are you to be here in, not your home waters, but... It's only an hour away, so... I know, it's, it's nice. It's pretty nice. I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, the weather's just been phenomenal. It's yeah. hot. Um, you know, it, it is the spawning time of the year. Yeah. Fish are trying to spawn, and uh, I've seen a lot of males. So, I'm... I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know what I'm on because I really didn't set the hook on a bunch, but yeah. I did get a lot of bites. So if I would have set the hook on a bunch of fish and they were all two pounders, I'd probably got a little discouraged. Yeah. So by not setting the hook and just shaking them off, yeah, I'm gonna let them surprise me. So I feel like uh, I'm in some good areas and uh, how hard, I'm looking forward to it. How hard is it? To, this is just this, I've never asked this question. Like, how hard is it to shake off a a fish though? It, it's pretty hard. There's there's different ways you can do it. We use what we call hitchhikers. Okay. So that way it takes away, like if you just, oh, I'm going to catch this. Yeah. You can't because all it is is like a spring. Oh, okay. You screw it into your plastic, you throw it out there, you get bit, he swims off. But yeah. You can just kind of shake it and he'll spit it. Yeah. But the other way to do it is a lot of people will bury the hook way up into the plastic. Okay. Where it can't pop out. Yeah. And then literally you're just shaking your rod tip and he'll oh, okay. eventually spit it. But I mean, you hook a lot that way, so I, I use the hitchhikers. I, I meant because you like fishing so much. How hard is it to not just yeah, but jack when, it? When it's your job. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, maybe that's what I, why I'm, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that, that's the thing, you know, when it's your job. I mean, you're right. I mean, I want to set the hook on everything, but when it's your job and dollars are on the line. Yes. Basically, you can find out where these fish are spawning by every bite. You hit waypoint, waypoint, waypoint. You come right back to them nine out of ten times, they will bite again if they haven't already spawned out and left. Yeah. I feel like this off day, um, without all the boats on the water, see, I, they should have pulled up yesterday, but they didn't. I mean, there was a few, but all the females should have pulled up, it mm -hmm. seems like. But I feel like boat pressure kept them off. Mm -hmm. uh, now that they've got a kind of a calm day out mm -hmm. there, I think they're going to pull up and... Uh, I think a lot of guys would be pleasantly surprised when they go out in the morning. That's I can't wait to hear. To I hope see. I'm one of them. <laughs> you don't know your number yet, do you? No, we'll find out here in a little bit, but I don't know it yet. You know, and that's the other thing. You know, I am going to be fishing in Lake Kissimmee, and I came up here yesterday trying to find a spot where I could catch two or three fish before I lock through in case I get a late boat number. Yeah. Because they're only taking up, from what I hear, 12 boats in the locks at a time. Oh. Well, when you got 170 boats, and I feel like 70% of them are going that way, mm -hmm. that's going to be a log jam. Yeah, it's so, going to be a real log jam. So you'd be there for 30, 40 minutes. No, hours. Really? Yeah, it'd be, it could be, you could be there two hours if you went straight there and waited. Ugh. So, obviously, I'm going to find some place to fish on Toho within eyesight yeah. of the locks. So yeah. I'll know when to make my move and go that way. But yeah. I did I didn't find a whole lot. I did find one fish on the bed that one female, but I think she's gonna be gone. It, it's probably an eight pounder. Ooh. But there were shiners swimming all over her bed, you know, trying to eat the eggs and they were busy running them off. So yeah. I feel like I feel like she probably left today. Does it help your confidence to know that you can really step up and have a really successful year? You know, I've been asked that in the past, and to be honest with you, my confidence 
makes no difference who's in it. I mean, ultimately, if you're driven in this sport, you want to beat the best. And, yeah. and I, I'm going to miss a lot of the guys that are gone because they were friends of mine. But you know, people say that that's just more money for us. That's just more. Well, you know what? I want them here. I want to compete against the best. Yes. And, and there's still a lot of great anglers here. I mean, a bunch. Yeah. But you take your Andy Morgans out, and, and you know some of the big hammers that that went Canterbury and all these guys. That's who you want to beat. That's what I, I'm competitive. That's yeah. who I want to beat. So my confidence, you know after practice, if your confidence is high or low. Yeah. Right now, I'm very optimistic. I got a lot of bites. I know what's coming. So I'm really looking forward to it. I may not catch but 10 pounds, but I may catch 30 pounds. You know, I, that's that's why I didn't set the hook on any fish yeah. because I just didn't want to know. Uh, I didn't have to worry about it. Yeah. I've, the more I do these, the less I can be in my own, my own head gets in my way sometimes, you know, you overthink things. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to have fun. And I think that's the key. Every time I go have fun, I catch them. Yeah. You know, if I put too much pressure on myself, like when the events at the Harris chain and, yeah. and I'm sponsored by Lake County, yeah. I had a lot of pressure. By on Lake me. Big Bass. Yeah. Lake Big that's Bass. Our, that's our home waters. Absolutely. And uh, I really wanted to show out for them, but it just, it just didn't work out. Yeah. And, uh, I'm gonna go have fun. I'm gonna see how it was kind of cold that week. Yeah, but you know, it was the same for everybody. Yeah, I know and, that. And I I knew that lake better than anybody out there. The problem is, since the grass has came into the chain, you know, a few years back, I haven't spent as much time on it because I'm traveling a lot, you yeah. know, and it's uh What do you think of our fishery first off? Um so you know, Florida was I came down here last year was the first time. So I uh, being from Texas, you know, I like the warm weather, the grass, all that stuff. So I like it. I mean, uh, I enjoy these places down here. They're different. They're a lot different than Texas on how the fish act yeah. and stuff. But I, I love it down. This is this is more my element. How long have you been? How long have you been in with FLW? Um, I've been fishing the coasts and everything for God, 12, 14 years. But the tour, this is my second year. This is your second year. What? Well, uh, it was there something that said you know I know what I need to I need to make the move or was just your compet the fire in you? No, um, I I had qualified. Uh just about i think almost every year i i fished i just didn't I, I, the money wasn't there and, and things weren't i wasn't set up to do it so yeah. i just i chose not to do it until uh some of my sponsors and everything lined up really well Costa and strike king they really helped out and so that helps yes helps out quite a bit big time how did you get introduced to the outdoors uh my dad i mean hunted fished all his life you know and, and so as it i don't remember doing anything else when i was a kid so, yeah and and you know, I played a lot of sports and stuff, but about my senior year in high school, I just looked up and I was like, man, I'd, I'd rather do all this than play sports. So uh, it was, a, it was, I didn't realize it was gonna be a, you know, a job opportunity for me when I got older, but I mean, it, it's, it's definitely paid off. Yeah. You're here. I heard you're an amazing sight fisherman. Is that your key? Is that your, is that your, your go-to? I've done, yes. Uh, you know, Yes, I, I've, I've won some coasts before sight fishing, and, and, and being from Texas back home, we do we do a lot of sight fishing and stuff. Uh, a lot more than I think most people, because uh, our year, they spawn here longer for very much, but ours go for two, two and a half months nonstop, so we just get a chance to do it more. Um, and so I... Uh, it's different in the tour level. I don't. I don't understand why it's been different. But like last year, I only got to sight fish like basically two days the entire year. Um, and and for whatever reason it is, I don't know if it's these lakes or our lakes sometimes are bigger, so you can do it. This puts you more of them. Uh, how do I say it? We're all grouped up a lot more so far that I've seen. And sometimes in, in Texas and some of the lakes that we have sight fished before, it spreads us out. And so, uh, yeah, that's the only thing I, I see. I mean, I kind of am just going to stick with my guns and do it. But, I mean, I don't really think it's right to do it right now. But um, it should be. It's all lining up to be, but it's not really. It's, it's not here yet. You can do it, but, I mean, I don't think it's. Like, usually we sight fish because we think we can win doing it. Um, I rarely sight fish because I want to come in 30th place. Yeah. So, um, and that's that's kind of what I'm seeing is that it's not it's not right 
they say it's supposed to be. Everything's lining up. Yeah, that you want to. That's the key that they say to every right, tournament. Right. Oh, they're about to push up, and and, and I've I've seen it back home. You know, uh, that's the, I've heard that more than anything. I mean, and all the time I've done the right. radio show, every time it's lining it's up to be on up. fire. Yeah, and and I've seen it back home where it was supposed to line up and it didn't. So, um, but you know, I'm still gonna go do it. With some some of the big sticks leaving to go to elites and go into major league fishing, does that help build your confidence where you can make a little bit more money this year? It, it's supposed to, and I had my uh, the first <laughs> tournament on my home lake. Although, if anyone uh, knows me, I was like, man, I was not excited about that. Not with it coming up like it was. It it put everything. It, it basically made all of us locals a disadvantage. Uh, so. Um, but yeah, I mean, there should be at the beginning of the year, and then you kind of get down here and you realize, you know, you start, you still got to go catch them. Yes. You know, it, it, it really doesn't matter that those guys left. I mean, I don't care who's in the tournament. If you're catching them, you're going to beat everyone in. Yeah. So uh, it sounds good in theory. Yes. And it didn't, it, it was nice. In the it's going to line all the way. Yeah, it's going to line up gonna, really it's good. It's going to line up where we're going to get, I'm going to get a check in every event and make a top 10 in every event. <laughs> That's and, awesome. And I did horrible in the first one. So, you know, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely worth, you know, something to think about for sure. That's all right. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to close up for you. There you go. I don't wear hats. So hats will make your hair fall out. Just look around the room, and you can see that that's the absolute truth. That's and if I did wear a hat, this is the hat I'd that's wear. That's the hat you're wearing. <laughs> the great Jimmy Houston, uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, as always. Uh, second term of the year. What are you thinking about? What do you think What do you think of our, our lake out here? You know, this is a great lake. Uh, Toho and Hatchnahaw and Cypress and uh, Kissimmee have a lot of bass in it. Uh, the weather's been absolutely Chamber of Commerce-like. It's been just as beautiful as it comes. And the fishing's been really tough on us. Uh, I'm going to need a lot of God's grace out there tomorrow. <laughs> you, you, but I haven't caught any big fish, so that's good. You know, yeah. that Rayburn, I caught four big ones in practice, and then all the catch in the tournament was three-pounders. So, uh, so that might be a good deal. I haven't caught a big one yet. Uh, how, how important is it to keep god in your life while you're out there fishing i mean god's important in all of our lives but for you i know we've talked about this on the radio show before it's it's re, it's a big influence for all for us all what keeps you continually talking about the lord well i think it's the most important thing you know uh, i've made a statement that you can uh, you can worry or you can trust god but you can't do both so uh that's why i'm really not too worried about tomorrow we've had a, a pretty horrible practice i think the first day of practice I think Chris caught six and I caught three. I think the second day of practice, she caught four and I caught one. <laughs> and I think yesterday she caught, she only caught three and I caught four, but she had two five pounders. So oh. she still beat me even though she only caught three. So uh, I think I might just, I think I might just disguise her and put her in a blonde wig instead of that black wig and let her go out there and fish in my place tomorrow. We might get another check. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be good. That you would know, be she good. does well. She's a really good fisherman, of course. So I don't really mind too much when she beats me because she's been doing it forever. So that, that's okay. With some of the guys moving. My Marshall beats me tomorrow. I've got yeah. a problem. I've oh. got a problem. Do you like the? Do you like not having a co-angler this year? You know, uh, I've always uh, I've always been a proponent for co-anglers because of the fact that I think it allows more people to, to fish, and I'm a big proponent for uh, getting as many people involved in fishing as I, as I can. And many of the co-anglers uh, that have come up through the ranks in both BASS and FLW have now more so in, in FLW have now turn professional or fishing professional for a living. So I think the co-angler program has been an outstanding uh, thing to happen. That said, uh, it's definitely been a benefit for me. Uh, at the last tournament, you know, I got a check and, and perhaps might not have got a check uh, because I had fish in small areas and was catching fish, you know, at times they were cast and my co-angler would have been catching basically half of those fish he'd been throwing in the same spot, which he would have been. Now, I realize some of the other competitors would have had the same problem, yes. obviously. You know, I, I, one boy I heard say he caught 29 on 29 straight cast. I did not do that, but I did have several casts in a row that I, that I caught a fish on. And, and obviously, his co-angler would have been catching some of those fish, too. So, it, uh, 
It's probably going to be beneficial to me. Uh, one of the reasons is that I fish with a lot of uh, uh, clients. I fish with a lot of our sponsors. I, I have guests on the television show all the time. I fish with a lot of the uh, clients of some of our large sponsors like Shell and, and uh, uh, O'Reilly's and people like that. And, and so I am constantly, most of my fishing, aside from a tournament, is trying to make sure the other guy in the other end of the boat catches a lot of fish and has a great time. And I certainly want them to catch the most fish, catch the largest fish. I mean, that's got a little, it's a little bit like being a guide. Yeah. Uh, except a lot of times the guide's not fishing. I'm not ever not fishing. I'm not going to ever get to that point. But, uh, but I am leaving the best for the people in the boat. And I know that I, I don't try to do that intentionally during the tournament, but I can't help but get it out of my mind that I really want that guy in the back of the boat, a co-angler, to catch a limit of fish. And, and most of my co-anglers do really, really well. Uh, several over the years, both in BASS and FLW, have won the tournament so the, the day that they were with me. So, um, you know, and some of them said, oh, my gosh, he's the best partner I've ever had. You know, yeah. he really helped me win this co-angler side. And, but that's just uh, the nature of, of what I've done. And, and, and um, you know, I'm not one of them that looks at it that if my co-angler catches a fish, I've made a mistake. In fact, I think if my co-angler catches a fish, I've done something right. And uh, yeah, it does hurt if you throw in and catch four or five two pounders, your co-anchor throws in there and catches a six, that happens. Yeah. And that happens to everybody, you know, everybody. But uh, it's, uh, it probably is beneficial for me not to have a, uh, to have, not to have a co-anchor. It's gonna help me probably more than it might help some of the others. Uh, but, you know, it remains to be seen, but um, I, it might help if I had somebody back in a sort of different bait figure out how yeah. to catch them, because I'm not, I'm not catching them very well. You know, we've had, it's been a crazy off season. Like, literally, the new, the major league fishing starting up, the bass elites, some of the guys that are, were in here, the, some of the guys moved on. Does that help you or does it motivate you or what does it, how does it, does it help you to have some of these guys not out here? You know, I don't think it has any effect on, on what I do because if you look at the, uh, I don't think it has effect on any of them. If you look at the tournament results from uh, Sam Rayburn, uh, you know, 32 pound stringer fish was caught, several stringers of fish over 25 pounds. Some of those were caught by guys, that, I think first and second place the first day, were people that had never fished the FLW Tour at the top level. And so yet they had like a, I can't remember exactly, but 27 and 29 or 27 and 25, something like that, huge strength of fish. Yeah. So it really makes no difference. I don't think that tournament scores are any, uh, any higher or any lower because of it. It's still gonna take a lot of fish and good fishing to do really well. and. Uh, and, and getting the money. Uh, this is still, I believe, the most difficult circuit of the three uh, because of the fact that we have more players than those other two combined. Yes. Words, if you were to combine MLF and, and BASS, it would still be more people you have to beat here to get a check. Here you have to beat, amazingly, you know, 105 people just to get a check. Yeah. You have to beat 105 people. And not for one day, you have to beat them for a two day competition. So. Uh, it is without a doubt still the most difficult. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's always been the most difficult because of the number of players. Uh, back when we started in BASS, we had 300 players, uh, 150 boats, because we were drawing and fishing against each other individually in the boat, as well as fishing against the other 298 players. And those were the most difficult because you had to add the deal of having to go to the other person's water half the day. You had to add the deal of perhaps fishing out of the other guy's boat. Yep. Uh, for the full day, or maybe flipping a coin, or you know, you know, a lot of us would. Um, those of us that could negotiate would negotiate and try to get our boat most of the time. And you know, as time went by, the you know, the, the guys that were up closer to the top uh, normally could take their boat, but out of respect for their their accomplishments in the past. And uh, even then, though, some people would make you flip for a boat, make you flip for whose water you go to first, yours or his. But the game has really got so much better than that now uh, with co-anglers and with now with marshals and yep and and i i agree that it probably should be played at the very top level with marshals i think that's probably the best way to do it and uh, it is in all three of the top organizations now um you know i didn't get invited to major league fishing so i can't really would I, you have went if you got invited you know i don't know because i don't really know that much about it it um is not as great as what i thought it was when i was hearing all the rumors i was hearing 
three hundred thousand to win every tournament, yeah. a million to win the championship, and it still may be that way. I don't know, but and everybody gets a check, uh, which they don't. Forty people went home from this last tournament without a check. Yep. Uh, the uh, the money is not nearly as large as what I was told it was. So I don't know. I mean, I I was not offered. Uh, I did get invited back to BASS, and that was a quite honestly. <laughs> A really difficult decision. Yeah, I mean it was a very difficult decision because uh, I fished BASS a lot, uh, fished 15 or 20 classics, and won a couple of Angler of the Year titles. And with only 80 players, I love that part of it. The fact that everybody gets a paycheck—that's kind of nice too. You that know? is. So you can really do poorly and still get get a paycheck, $2,500. Um, and it was a difficult decision. I came back to FL, FLW for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the fact that my wife Chris can still practice with me yep. during these FLW practices which she did you know all three days both tournaments so far and, and secondly you know FLW has been really really good to me over the last few years uh, and uh, they've helped me uh, you know with through the Quaker State sponsorship get acquainted with the people at Shell Oil Company and Shell now is our second largest sponsor from that we've got O'Reilly which nice. are large television sponsors is in addition to involved at the tournaments and uh, you know it just seemed to me like if I left FLW and went back to Bass and I have a huge amount of respect for Bass. Yeah. Luke Aiken is a very very good personal friend and he personally invited me back and uh, and I told him you know I, I told him just exactly what I'm saying now you know I just it almost would seem like I was kicking sand in their face if I if I left FLW. Yeah. And they had already asked me to come back to FLW and, and you know and and uh, so those two things when you weigh them together it just seemed like the right thing to do. Yeah. Maybe not the easiest way to play the game, maybe not the most financially better way to play the game. But, what were you but, felt comfortable with? You know, I feel good about it. I feel good about that decision. And, uh, uh, you know, it, I, I'm not, not saying I may at some point in time go back and play it. Uh, my, maybe my last year, whenever yeah. that may be. Yeah. I don't know what that might be. Uh, at BASS, just to make a little farewell, farewell tour over there on BASS. But then that may not happen either. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't really have any intentions on quitting. Next, next year will be the 55th year of fishing national tournaments. That's, so that's unbelievable. Anybody, Congratulations. Unbelievable. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, it's, it's insane to even do that. Yes. My, my buddy Kevin Van Dam told me one time, you don't have to worry about me breaking that wet, wet record. He said, I'll never ever fish bass <laughs> tournaments that long. And uh, but and I didn't intend to fish bass tournaments that long either, And, uh, and I, but I don't really know how to quit. I don't know where to quit we, as long as we're still healthy and can still play. Chris is still healthy and she can still come and practice with me. It's, it's just a big part of our life and, and has been for so long that we'll probably continue to do it. And I can't make the money nearly as often as I did in the early days, even with 300 players out there, I did pretty well. And, you know, I just can't play the game quite that good anymore. I practice hard, I try hard, I fish hard. It's just, uh, you know, as you get older, you can't play that, this game as well. And there's a lot of other people that, not any of them except for Roland Martin, quite as old as I am, but they, they prove it out there in the tournaments that they're still playing it. Guys that are playing at 50 and 60 years old that can't play the game nearly as well as as they could. Big name fishermen, yeah. guys that have been. I mean, this is like the biggest name, like Roland Martin and and Ricky Clun and Kevin and and Denny Brower and on and on and on. Uh, age is, age, this is an athletic contest as well as a fishing contest, just like you know playing golf or baseball or anything else. And there's just no one that can continue to play those games at the level that they can when they're in their prime age situations and. Uh, because they're just so much into involved into these guys getting as skilled as they become at 30, 35 years old. And, and I, to, I don't think uh, anyone's ever won an Angler of the Year at 50 years old or older. And you're talking about guys like Roland Martin that's won it nine times, Kevin Van Dam that's won it seven, Ricky Klein, multiple people yeah. like myself that have won it two times. Uh, and yet, no one's ever on, 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 at one angle of the year over at, at age, age 50 that I know of. I, I can't no, I don't, think of anybody I don't, that has. So, it's uh, it'd be a great honor if somebody could, and, and you know, and somebody perhaps will. And that, that'd be a, that'd be a great thing to accomplish. Thank you for the time, first and foremost. Glad to be here. One of the big sticks I've been trying to trying to get with you for a couple years. You have done very well here on FLW the tour. Uh, where are you from? How did you get started? You know, I'm from Maryland, uh, lived there all my life, and, you know, grew up fishing the Potomac, tidal water, a lot of grass, so anywhere there's grass, I'm in, you know, I'm pretty much in heaven. You like what you're seeing out here this week? Yes, I definitely like what I'm seeing out here. There's plenty of grass, so I'm, you know, I'm loving that. I'm just worried that the fish are in transition. I don't know if I'm going to catch fish that are coming or leaving or 
you know, all the different phases are going on. But I don't believe all the fish go to the bank at one time. I like being offshore and that's pretty much where I'm gonna concentrate in the grass offshore. What are your thoughts about not having a co-angler this year? You know, this year we don't have any co-anglers. I think it's a good thing at this level simply because there was no way to keep it, um, you know, the same for everybody. So you might get a co-angler that is super aggressive. You might get a co-angler who's not and just is back there and, you know, enjoying the day. Or you get a co-angler that actually shows you how to catch the fish. You know, it doesn't tell you, but you see he used this particular bait and you might have found the fish and he shows you how to catch it. So there is no way to keep it even for everybody. And at this level with the amount of money on, on the line, I think it was a good decision to do no co-ang. Been a weird off season, even though this is event two. Uh, did you get did you get an offer to go to Major League Fishing? I did not get an offer to go to Major League Fishing. It has been a year of changes. Um, you know, it's, I think it's all good and going in a good direction. You know, the sport needed some change, and I think it's trickling down to all levels and helping everybody. If you got an invitation, would you have went? Uh, I know that's a hypothetical, but I mean, you know, think of the the eighty being part of that 80 group with the, that group of anglers. To, to associate yourself with that group of anglers, to have the opportunity, if I would have had it, I would have strongly uh, just decided to probably go there. You know, I obviously talk it over with my family, but the the legends and, you know, the people that are part of that, it's it would be awesome to be part of it. With some of, the, some of the big names, some of the guys from FLW moving on to other tours, does that, does that give you some confidence that, not that it's going to be easier, but that you're you're really in that top group? You know, definitely you have to keep a mindset. We lost a lot of talent in FLW. Bassmasters lost a lot of talent. Um, you have to still have the mindset that you're fishing against the best in the world, or you're going to get your butt kicked. There's still plenty of guys here that can catch them. Yeah. So mentally. You know, I'm super prepared to fish against the best people tomorrow, you know, in fishing. That's how I got to handle it, you know, but we did lose a lot of town. Yeah. I'm excited to see FLW here, and I thank them for everything that they did today. It was really fun to go to the registration and to, to see some people and to meet to some new people. So over the next few days, we'll probably have a little bit more on what's going on here with FLW. Seems like they're... Uh, excited about what's happening this is their second tournament it's here on toho it makes sense for us to to come out here and cover it but uh what you should do if you're new to the channel or you don't know you can go to our website or email us directly at info at fishing florida radio why would you do that well we give away free prize packs everybody who emails us or contacts us or private messages us off our facebook page we try to make sure that we put you in that list but please go to the end and subscribe and comment and click the notification button and help us out you know we're trying to establish get all this together and and hopefully the content continues to improve and this gets better but we'd love it if you go and go to our youtube channel it's youtube it's this right here it's youtube channel youtube.com slash fishing fl radio subscribe like comment hit the notification button you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash fishing Florida and send us a private message to get on the, the list of the free tackle or just email us info at fishingfloridaradio.com and we'll put you on there. It Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. What's a little bit of time? Two, three, four weeks, but it's free tackle from a lot of great, a lot of great sponsors. So until we see you again, get your fish on. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I am Steve Chapman. I am part of Fishing Florida Radio. Yes, I just wiped a booger off my nose, but it's wonderful weather out here.